Good morning, YouTubers. You have reached the Brian Sledge channel. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, thank you very much, and have a great day. Bye. Louder with Crowder Studios, protected exclusively by Walther and Hopper. This is a funny one, Cable, print, and big tech. The media lies all day. Lie harder, lie faster. How are we supposed to know what the truth is anymore? The truth is irrelevant. Obfuscation is key. Uh, this is all funny news, Wonka. They think I'm gonna be sick. Oh no, he's brought up the black homosexual. Ninja. Ah, now I am gonna be sick. It's the DMC's pool boy. Ah. Oh, are they blocking you on college campuses, Ben? Let's cry. They tell it. Which lies they will be spreading. There's no knowing where they're going. He's singing now. Or yeah. Who they're deplatforming. Are they lying? Or just bending? Doesn't matter. Once it's trending. Ha ha! Not a shred of truth is showing. From the investigations ongoing. Are the overlords still eyeing, accusing the president of spying? Yes! The content they keep demonetizing for Big Tech keeps on lying, but we're certainly not crying, because through Buzz Club, they are dying! Stop! I have marks on my knuckles because we have Representative Dan Crenshaw on the show. Oh, yeah. And all the ladies and a lot of the men in the studio have been going, <gasps> that eye patch. So people love it. It works for them. Uh, we have my half Asian lawyer, Bill Richmond, in wow. third chair, along with, because we had a booking error, uh, Mahmoud <laughs> Al Mahmoud, ISIS uh, communications director. How are you, sir? Doing well. Here to, again to show you the softer side of ISIS. I am very appreciative. <laughs> <laughs> you are here. Court of Black Air, drum your hood pass. What's up, G. Bro? Morgan Jr., what's the one of the day? Bridesmaid Red. Oh, bridesmaid. Oh, bridesmaid. That's, what I, that's what I thought. Wow. You are going to be Always the bridesmaid. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Yep. <laughs> I still don't buy it. 20, what, 28 days? <laughs> 22. Not buying it. Oh. Question oh. of the day. Uh, let me ask you this. Was this President Trump's breakthrough week of winning? Are you tired yet? If so, what was your favorite? <laughs> name your favorite win this week. Uh, also, Notification Squad, please let us know if you're subscribed or alerted yes, to notifications. Yes. How are you receiving them? Because a lot of people say they're not getting them. Yep. We don't know what's going on. We yeah. need to know. Give we us can't info. play by the rules. We have Representative Dan Crenshaw. We're going to get into the top wins of this week with so President many. Donald Trump. So much. So much so Wittig, so. frankly. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Mahmoud? Well, you know, a, day, uh, a week where you're winning is not a, a week where we're winning, so <laughs> not, much. not that great, but that's, uh, that's kind of why I'm here. So. Yeah, one hell of a week for us, though. Offering different <laughs> points it. of view, like Brian Stelter's yeah. program. Leading the news, uh, <laughs> for those who weren't following, the FBI is now reportedly probing why charges against Jesse Smollett were dropped. This comes from the New York Post. There's confusion as to why charges were dropped, even though there was evidence for a conviction, is what they said. And many of us Gosh. are confused, too. Thankfully, uh, the actor promises to answer all the questions in his upcoming tell all if I totally did it, which seems. <laughs> <laughs> and all signs, by the way, point to a highly partisan decision made by the district attorney's office. It's the suspicions that were all but confirmed after this leaked phone call. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we now do, in fact, have the check the suspect paid the two brothers with. The suspect paid by check. Okay, got it. And we now have the receipt for the rope the brothers bought for the noose for the staged attack. Okay, noose. Got it. Now, the department believes that this, in combination with all of the other evidence, uh, should lead to an easy conviction of Jesse Smollett. Wait. Jesse Smollett as an empire? Uh, yes. 
Oh my god, I love that show! Well, justice <laughs> is yeah, blind. That's, uh, that does it. Yeah, it look, happens, unless you know? you're a rich gay black guy. Uh, apparently so. And look, I, I don't want to pile on. Any, anybody who's having a bad day like he is Jesse definitely Smart, having a bad day. He would love to pile on, of course. Yes, right. I know. But uh, <laughs> he, he should definitely get whatever penalty it comes with, what, 16 charges? <laughs> yeah, $10,000 well, yeah. well, and what, 15, 16 hours worth of community service? What would I don't that think usually that's be, normal. Half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond. I mean, he's got so many different things. You know, the amount of money that was spent by the city oh, yeah. dealing with all of this is not even, I mean, we're not coming it's anywhere insane. near that with what he's done so yeah. far. And Rahm Emanuel's pissed and going after that money. He said he's actually going to tally it all up and send him a bill. And not when Rahm Emanuel gets pissed, someone gets finger poked in the yeah. shower. <laughs> Naked, by <laughs> the way. Of, none, yeah. of, none, of, none of this would be happening in Chicago if Carl Winslow was was still patrolling. <laughs> you know what I mean? I do. Oh, yeah, I think so. Far they lost the translation. That was not a documentary film, but it's tough to know now with Amazon Prime. Yeah. They all bleed together. In international news, New Zealand is now calling for citizens to voluntarily surrender their guns after the mosque uh, shooting. Wow. Of an estimated 1.2 million guns in the country, uh, the total number surrendered thus far is 37. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Amazing. Yeah. So this comes from BuzzFeed. The prime minister reminds people that, quote, to make our community safer, the time to act is now in a country where there is one gun for every four people or is seen after encouraging gun owners to surrender their weapons. One gun for every four people. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I now love New Zealand. I really do. I mean, yeah. <laughs> they overreacted a little bit with this, but I love the New Zealanders. Like thirty-seven of us. What are did come you think would happen? <laughs> yeah, you know what we definitely didn't need there was anyone defending us with a gun. I, exactly. I mean, that's the yeah. conclusion. I think that guy should donate his gun back. Yes, exactly. Which irony of ironies. The guy that defended him and chased him off. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, yeah. we tried Here something. We tried something like this when we overtook Raka. Uh, we did this whole, uh, you know, turn in your head thing. Nobody does it. <laughs> Nobody does it. Total failure. That's true. Yeah, you I can call see, me yeah. New Zealand. I don't know what we learned. We'll set it up. I don't even know who the prime minister is, but I'm sure he's free. Uh, turning she. to she, religion. She, who cares? Yeah. It's an inconsequential country. True. And now they'll be pissed, and I don't care. That's how you know. <laughs> Turning to religion, uh, the Pope, for some reason, really, really doesn't want anyone to kiss his ring. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe that's real. When asked, the Pope said, Do you have any idea where those cardinals' mouths have been? It's been like <laughs> while he's in the kitchen. Which, by the way, is why when offered, refuse the syrup. Always refuse the syrup. <laughs> in other news, Lateral Crater obtained uh, exclusive audio from the Pope's Lav mic. <laughs> it doesn't get better, folks. <laughs> what is so weird to me? Like the moral superiority here oh of a gosh. ring pop, which is probably what he was trying to protect. Yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, he had it's, a ring no, pop. It's Jerry, I love Jerry. What's weird to me is the people who can clearly see up ahead in the line, yeah. and they try to fake him out. <laughs> They're trying to pull the Gordon Bombay triple deke. One lady, she yeah. walks up like, "I'm not going to." Yes, I am. Oh, skunked again. <laughs> Look at the down. eyes, duck it. Oh my god, I get awesome. it, man. I get it. It's flu season, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be too, too, not fully too certain. Blessed. No, if you manage awesome. to scale the Vatican walls, hopefully you've had your flu shot. By the way, walls don't work. In entertainment news, Chris Evans now says that he wouldn't play Tom Brady in a movie uh, as long as uh, Brady remained a Trump supporter. This Boom. comes from a Hollywood reporter. <laughs> to quote the actor, if Brady's still on that Trump train, I might have to cut ties. It's really tough. Yeah, really oh, hard for Chris Evans. Guy. So yeah. This explains the recent Comic-Con leaks of Captain America, Infinity Twink. We were wondering... <laughs> For a bit, oh, that's a little bad right there. Look, yeah. look, look just, I'd watch he, it. He needs, he needs to, yeah. <laughs> looks, looks on the good. Trump train. I mean, what does that even mean? You can't support the sitting president. What more than half of the people in the country right. do that? What are you now the thought police? Like we can't even associate this. This what is it? That spiral of silence that they talked about in Nazi yeah. Germany. It's exactly how stuff like that start. Don't oh, you can't compare even, it to Nazi it, Germany hey, for crying out on, loud. I am going to do it's, that. Because it's, a it's the same drama thing that geek happened. on steroids in a subpar him. Marvel it's film. It's We're a ton of other people that won't them. let you even think about it. Ask people to wear a MAGA hat out there. I will point out that Chris Evans played the hitman in uh, in the Iceman movie. Oh, he did? Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, 
that's kind of he's, interesting. Yeah, obviously, how I does that relate? Really? The ice, murderer, but no. the ice man would eat pizza while dismembering people. Oh, sick person! And honestly, it inspired me to get into violence. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, everybody has that moment. Yeah, and pizza. That right? was mine. That, moment. that was mine. Mine was David Letterman, <laughs> and yours was Ice Man. Yeah, yeah. Wasn't, wasn't there another one not with uh, Chris Evans, but with uh, what's his name? The guy from uh, NYPD Blue. He has that really English name, but he's Latino. He was in Sons of Anarchy. Gemma, that guy. I Gemma. don't know. There was another. The large Gemma. man. Yeah, there was. Gemma. That's all I know. Someone's going to hear Gemma, and, and they're going to know, know what I'm talking about. He was in NYPD Blue. He always had bags under his eyes. Anyways, I think he played Iceman in another one. Finally, there's Nancy Pelosi. Uh, before we get to the wins of, of this oh, yeah. week, uh, Nancy Pelosi, while pandering to APAC, uh, she confused Syria with cereal. Oh. Hezbollah seeks to set up terror networks on the border between Israel and Syria. Yeah. Oh. Uh, quick to capitalize on it, of wow. course, was Kellogg's. Terror networks on the border between Israel and Syria. Government in command. Scoops of bullshit. So, uh, <laughs> before the show, actually, Mahmoud was kind enough to share yes. with us some of the most popular cereals in, oh. in Syria in actuality. I we think it'll be educational. You yeah. Know, differences well, you. in cultures. Nice so, work. we're really appreciative and we're glad to have you here. And that uh, brings us to this week's 7 Plus 1. You forgot the one in the chamber. You always it, forget it, the oh, one in the chamber. Yeah, Every time. If my half Asian lawyer weren't uncomfortable in this program after the Pope bit, this mm -hmm. is he definite. Will yeah. be. Uh, <laughs> we'll go through them. These are the top seven plus one most popular cereals in Syria. Number seven, Fruity's Pebbled. Yeah, that's a popular one that uh, would yeah. seem to. Um, we grew up better. on that one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not, Not as necessarily, but uh, uh, still delicious. Helpful. Uh, number six, Burka Brand, which almost uh, seems as though it's redundant given the the previous one. Uh, I think uh, Mahmoud, how about you take a swing here at uh, num this is number five most popular uh, cereal in Syria. <laughs> Chew Krispies. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I, I don't do remember this one. <laughs> I think you do. I think you do. Uh, number four, Count. Yeah, la, 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 oh yes, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Mm, what are your favorites? Favorite, uh, yeah. You know that one is gluten free. If you are <laughs> it's a very <laughs> difficult keto? commercial. Keto? Working the keto diet. Uh, <laughs> let's uh, let's uh, have uh, uh, half Asian lawyer Bill Richmond number three. Fruit Loops being thrown off of buildings. Yes, that's oh. this. This is the only one that's a, uh, a good for uh, as a lunchtime or pastime. <laughs> <laughs> they can't fly. Uh, my food. Uh, number two, actually, it's total annihilation of the Jews. Yeah, it oh, seems as, that's it's almost as it though in. it isn't mm. a real cereal so uh. much as it's the expressed purpose in your charter. My mood. Uh, the, the, it's there's a theme. Yeah, there's a theme. Uh, <laughs> and the number one most popular cereal in Syria right now, rape nuts. Yes, and uh, of course we always forget the one in the chamber. Uh, Mahmoud, why don't you take us out with the plus one? Well, this one's my uh, my my favorite one. Growing up was uh, honey bunches of goats. <laughs> honey bunches of goats. That has been this week's seven plus one. You forgot the fun in the chamber! I don't know why he feels the need to repeat it when every we time. clearly know now. Every time. It's been every, drilled every in. Who is he yelling it at? It can never be too safe. Posterity. Usually a usually James Bond. Oh, it's usually well. a, that's where it comes from. I think. I have no idea. I just feel like it's something you've heard in a lot of films. Yes. It's a, but I don't know who forgets the one in the chamber. Not anymore, they don't. I have no idea. By the way, did you hear that uh, Alexandria Ocasio Nina Pinta Santa Maria Cortez, she wants to ban all semi automatics? Oh. Yeah. She, she just fit that in there. She's like, high-capacity magazines and semi-automatics. We don't have this prep for the show. But no. in her tweet, she says, uh, designed to kill people. Because I like my guns designed to not kill people. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I want them to hurt them a little bit. I just what, want them to. When I pull the trigger, I want them to say, "Stop." Can me. we set the Walther to stun? Yes, exactly. Like, what is this Star Trek? Zone to be an airsoft. It is a lot of what they do. She yeah. just she just shoehorns in all semi-automatics. Wait, hold on a second. That means everything but a lever action or pump pump uh, shotguns and I, I don't know. Anyways, no, no, but, but you heard what she did recently, right? She she actually put her money where her mouth is, and she actually asked all of the congressional police who are around her office to give up their guns. Really? Oh, sorry. It's nice. That's smart. I agree. Yes, oh, that is totally didn't happen. I thought I mean, you happen. were telling the truth because I would expect the fake news from Mahmoud because you of the propaganda. You guys should do that, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, Mahmoud, no. Make it happen. No. Uh, last week's trivia winner, by the way, uh, was Laura Van Pelt, who correctly answered uh -huh. that the chosen drinking vessel among survivors of uh, the zombie apocalypse is, well, I guess it's uh, the mug. Is that? I don't it's know what the answer is. Yeah, it's got to be the mug. I don't obvious. know how she won. It seems like we're getting a little loose giving away the mug clubs. All right. So, uh... <laughs> Context here, Donald Trump, President Trump has had an unusually good week. Huge. And as a, a group of people here who've been uh, 
critics of the president yeah. when wrong. I think it's important to praise him when he's right. So yes. we've actually uh, rounded up the uh, top four, top four or five, I think. Again, you tell us which one you think is the most significant yeah. from this week. So much winning. Obviously, the biggest one right here is uh, the Mueller report. Oh, yeah. So uh, keep in mind here, for the past two years, two years, the left told us that Mueller was closing in on mm -hmm. President. It was, it was basically, right, it was inevitable. Yeah. The right. walls are closing in. I think of Donald Trump as the Titanic and Robert Mueller as the iceberg. So <laughs> flowery. <laughs> him, his family, and his aides. Everyone in the Oval Office must go. Comedy. How does Chris Matthews still have? I think of him as a Titanic and uh, Mueller as the iceberg. I also like to think of him as a homeless man and Mueller with a sandwich, only there's uh, mold. <laughs> Did I take my pill with the tea on? I today? drank a bucket of salt water before this program. <laughs> you really, really want to make sure you're going to be right if you're that flowery in your language. <laughs> like yes. If you really go that yeah. far I mean, in, I mean, it just seems to make me sure like it's 100%. multiple writers. You, you know, they yeah. could say, "Well, hold on a second, maybe we could spice up this analogy a little yeah. bit." No, oh. I like how iceberg <laughs> is the way to go. Trust yeah, B-roll. It's like, all roll about the icebergs nowadays, kids. <laughs> all you kids with your twitters and your books of faces and social media, you don't know a good iceberg analogy when you see one. <laughs> it's all icebergs, Carl. Hey, all the growing ice in uh, Greenland, right? Yeah, I mean, there's too much I mean, of it now. It's a big danger now. It's going to sink more ships. We should yeah. get rid of it. Hey, but let's uh, check in and, and see how they're doing this week. Yeah. 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 When Barr released a four-page letter summarizing it, it was like the Cliff Notes, or uh, more like, I want to jump off a Cliff Notes. So let me make sure I understand this, uh, mm. Mr. Colbert. You want to jump off a cliff because our president didn't collude? with a foreign power to rig an election, and they wonder why we think the left hates America. I know. And it he is wants to cut his wrists to Elliot Smith's needle in the hay because we found out that our president was honest. Right. Yeah. He wasn't colluding with a foreign power. I, what else do you guys really want, right? Your basic argument now is that he is guilty because we said it. I saw myself say it on the news last night. It must be real. That's yeah. the argument. I dreamed a dream, and I want it to be true. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah exactly. that's all it is. I thought it was a bummer. <laughs> I'm sure you did. So, Looking for any opening, aren't agree you? Agree to Mahmoud? disagree. <laughs> I dreamed a dream. There was an iceberg. I don't know. I don't get the Titanic iceberg thing. Someone let that make air. Please, if ever I'm doing something, I, I'm sure Please. that this program we alone, we've it. done things that are far lazier yes. than that. That being said, it still doesn't come across as off-putting. Remember, by the way, how all of these uh, progressive outlets, they were outraged when, when Rush Limbaugh said he hoped Obama would fail? Oh, Remember yeah. That? Uh, They're yeah. saying he's un-American. Well, we were supposed to think that he had committed treason just because he wanted Obama to fail with a socialist agenda. You know, like giving yeah. sweeping legislative control over the fifth of the U.S. economy, record job, low participation, you know, you know with that kind of thing. Like, yeah, uh, exactly. He just wanted him to fail at implementing an agenda, but now it's fine to wish that the president was a Russian asset just because it would be a point to your political team. And these are the same people mm -hmm. who talk about political division all the time. Yeah. This is why I don't want to find common ground. No. How do you find common ground with someone who is bummed that our president didn't collude with Putin? Yeah, and he's, <laughs> he's not for socialism. That's totally fine. By the way, like a silver lining to Bernie, he's brought all the socialists kind of out of the closet. It's actually kind of a nice thing. Ocasio-Cortez yeah. as well. Yeah. They're out in front now. Back in Obama's day when like Limbaugh's saying socialism, it's not socialism now. It's like, yeah, he, he no, was... Remember he they right. said they said, I think they're saying socialism because they can't say the N-word. Yeah. Oh, that's what they remember that? That's, that's what they used right. to say? Yeah, yeah. They said it's a dog that, whistle for the end. That's right, it was. Yeah. Yeah. See, because but now it's out in the open. All of the noted socialists throughout history were black people. <laughs> <laughs> No. And then right away when they say, yeah, well, you're ra socialism and race you're racist against Obama. Well, okay, give me an example of successful socialism. Whitest country ever, Norway. Yeah, let's go with that. <laughs> nice. Denmark, you prefer? You prefer Iceland. There are icebergs over there. Uh, the it's misleading. Lots, it's a lots. great country. Win number two, Michael Avenatti. And I just need to, hold on, just say it and let it ride. I don't need to say it anymore, but I'll explain it because, you know, I feel like you deserve more content. This is the lawyer who represented Stormy Daniels, a uh, uh, porn star suing Donald Trump. Julie Swetnick. This is something classic. people remember Stormy Daniels. They don't remember Julie Swetnick. She was the one who accused yeah. Kavanaugh of running quaalude rape gangs in high school. Ah, yeah. Entrepreneur, apparently. That, that phrase actually made headlines. Accused sitting Supreme Court Jeez. Justice of running quaalude rape gangs. What? What do you mean, what? You don't remember this? I don't remember We the covered headline. it live! I don't remember the headline. I remember the story. Maru, you probably remember, I remember it. I remember it, actually. It and I'm, I'm still waiting to see how it turns out. This <laughs> Avenatti thing, this one caught me off guard. I, I really thought that this guy was, uh, was, was a good guy. Do you know what? Half Asian Bill, did you know anything about Avenatti before this? 
No, I mean, other than other before um, Stormy, no, no, not, not much. Bad. I don't know if he, you know, you ran in the same no, circles. No, no, not often. He runs in circles. Obviously. Not, not <laughs> yeah. all lawyers not are the same. Well, keep in mind, this is something. This is what we want to. We want to go pre and post. Avenatti was supposed to be Trump's worst nightmare. Yeah. And by the way, to hear Brian Stelter, which I still don't get, hear Brian Stelter tell it, a serious presidential contender. Here, remember this. Well, you know, if anyone knows a con, I guess it would be Donald Trump. This guy has or zero you. credibility <laughs> in the eyes of most Americans and certainly in the eyes of the world. He's Look a at habitual <laughs> liar. <laughs> the dominoes have this already started legitimate to fall. News. And I truly believe that this is the Achilles heel of the president. Looking ahead to 2020, uh, one reason why I'm taking you oh. seriously as a contender <laughs> is because of your presence on cable news. By the way! <laughs> Can you be any more transparent, <laughs> Stelter? By the way, the reason that I think it would be great that you were in office is because you do my show? Like, we all know you want an in. Exactly. Fat, ignorant, bald, and gay is no way to go through life, oh. son. I don't get the Stelter thing. Can someone, who lost, uh, someone at CNN had to pick between Brian Stelter and someone, there was someone else. <laughs> There's Anybody someone, there was a lineup. <laughs> There was a lot of it, more than the people letting up to kiss the Pope's ring, and someone said, you, Mr. Stelter. <laughs> That's got to be the worst second place ever. I get why you guys watch and hate America when you watch our news. Yeah, I don't know. I see Stelter. I feel like uh, it, it almost reminds me of your wrestling where you have the, good, the, the heel. <laughs> you know? Oh, I got you. Yeah. I, I, th I, I feel like, you know, maybe he knows what he's doing. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> oh a little bit. Gosh. He's like a he's Ric getting, Flair. He's getting what he wants. I guess. Or Jesse Ventura. He's getting heat. But, okay, so anyways, back to Avenatti. We got complete. I got so distracted by Stelter. Someone please explain to me this Delta <laughs> thing. Here's the thing. Like I've talked about school choice. I don't understand the case for it. I can understand the case for Bill Maher. I certainly understand the case for yeah. John Stewart. I know you guys don't like Colbert. I think Colbert can be very funny. I understand Anderson Cooper, okay? I get uh. it. He was great on the mole. I understand uh, Don Lemon because, you know, he seems like he could be in intelligent sometimes. He seems yeah. like he's relative. Mm -hmm. Brian Stelter has, please, someone make a case for any redeeming quality. <laughs> He for makes, this man. He makes everyone else around him look much smarter. That's it. <laughs> I mean, that's it. That's it. He found it. And I just read today that he's straight. Okay. So Michael <laughs> Avenatti. <laughs> I just, how could we know? Michael Avenatti now been arrested for a $20 million extortion uh, plot against Nike. Uh, embezzling clients money, defrauding a bank. Could spend life in prison if convicted. That's actually, wow. Comes from CNBC. Mm. Oh so, gosh. you know what? The good news for Avenatti is that dreams do come true. All of my sexual fantasies involve handcuffs. <laughs> Good morning. Oh, wow. Hey. Good for him. Oh, my mind. gosh. When God closes a door. <laughs> <laughs> he opens a sex dungeon. <laughs> With handcuffs. Uh, now, by the way, really quickly, before you feel sorry for him, don't. Yeah, no. It's, <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, it's hard in general for us to feel sorry for lawyers. Sorry, half Asian lawyer, Bill. It's all right. It's um, all right. I, I'm asking, is anybody coming to his defense at all? Like, it's it's been crickets no. for this Stormy guy. Stormy Daniels threw him under the bus. <laughs> They're all like, Ooh. Yeah, I know, but normally the left kind of comes out and tries to kind of make yeah. something happen, and no one. Everybody just, he stepped forward, and everybody's like 100 yards behind him. And, now. It, but <laughs> this is, some, well, we'll get to this at, at the end of, uh, of this whole segment. It is amazing that the media is not talking about mm -hmm. this, really. I mean, this guy, think of it, he was a centerpiece yeah. on media mm -hmm. for a long, oh, yeah. long time. Kavanaugh, you couldn't hear without Avenatti. They were saying, oh, yeah. Donald Trump, they just assumed the Stormy Daniels thing was yeah. true. And I'll be honest, I said at that point, like, ah, it's a 50-50 shot. That being said, even if there's a 50-50 shot that something did happen with Stormy Daniels, now no one will believe you because no. you're Michael Avenatti. Uh, win number three. <laughs> uh, this is a big one. For me, this is probably this the biggest one. Uh, the good. Green, you've heard us talk about it. I've read that you can watch on the channel. I read the yep. whole Green New Deal in its entirety, yeah. unedited. Right. This was supposed <laughs> to be the legislative darling of the left. Climate change and our environmental challenges are one of the biggest existential threats to our That's the key way word, existential threat. We have what? the technology to do it. We have the moral no, we obligation. We have no. the economic <laughs> imperative. No. We just need the political will to get this done. I support a Green New Deal. Okay. And I why? will tell you why. Climate change is an existential threat oh. to oh. us. She said that word again. No, she said it again. Effort. Today we Drink. say to Donald Trump and the fossil fuel industry that climate change is not a hoax, Wait but it's a it. massive threat, an existential threat no, to oh, our yes. country and the entire planet.
apparently our greatest existential threat uh, tallies up to a whopping zero votes of support. <laughs> right? And she said afterwards oh, that that, wow. that was a strategy. I, I don't understand. The vote present strategy looks a heck of a lot worse than the zero yes vote strategy. I, I, it right? is remarkable yeah, to me. exactly. And they say, they say it's a political stunt. This was the thing. Like, it's a political stunt to put it to a vote without a hearing. Well, so is introducing a five-page bill that takes over the entire American economy because we say. want, quote, a smart grid. <laughs> With no definite. <laughs> How long did it take you to read that, by the way? Uh, 16 minutes. 16 People can go watch it. Reddit and minutes. 16 yeah. minutes to read the. Is it monetized yet? The whole. Oh, it's never monetized. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think was going to happen? Instantly monetized. They just saw a Green New Deal uh, and they said, oh, Crowder, Green New Deal. This matches done. up with an algorithm of screw, screw, <laughs> screw, screw. <laughs> Fourth win this week, uh, President Trump's emergency declaration. So for people who haven't really been following the timeline, and this is kind of difficult, I think, for a lot of people, back yeah. in February, President Trump declared a national emergency in order to get funds for the border wall. Congress voted to reject the declaration. Then he vetoed the rejection. This Big. week, President Trump's veto of their blocking was upheld, and a billion dollars is on its way to the border yes. as we speak. Pallets of cash, baby. And we'll talk with Congressman Crenshaw about this because some Republicans are divided uh, yeah. on, on this. I actually do. This is, I think, it's an issue of national security. Yeah. He does have the authority. What do you think, yeah. half Asian Larry Bill Richmond? Absolutely. I mean, there's, there's not, there's no question. I mean, I've said this before. I've got family in El Paso. When you go to El Paso and you look right there between the border of America and Juarez, Mexico is a wall. And, yeah. and no one is saying that there has to be an exact same wall across the entire border, but there needs to be security. So yeah. putting a billion dollars into something as important as regulating what can come into this country, both from a physical sense or a person sense, has yeah. been the policy strategy of every single nation that has ever existed or that hopes to exist. Or, or keep in existence, exactly. right? So, and, and this is really two wins in one for him. When you're yeah. a president and you pull out your first veto, that's a big deal. That's putting everything kind of on the line because if you lose that, you're pretty powerless after that. Yeah. So he, his, he was able to sustain the veto and he's getting his border wall. So yes. this is huge. A veto him. stings. But yes. to Brian Stelter, maybe the billion dollars going to a black <laughs> as a salve. <laughs> Feels do great. we say? Do we pronounce the Salve? 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 I don't know. Salve doesn't sound right. I don't All know. All I know is you pronounced mm. Nike right earlier, so that was Did good. I say it yeah, correctly? Yeah, I think good so. Job. I don't know. Oh, nice. You know what word I pronounce incorrectly all the time? I know it's supposed, but I often say supposed. supposed. It's like sounds like I'm saying yeah. supposed, like almost, I'm Jodie Foster, yeah. and I know how to say it right. <laughs> but I'm very but stupid. Don't. I almost put like Nike with like five e's after it just to help. Yeah, to just read it out phonetically. <laughs> Nike. Nike. <laughs> no, that's what the children say when they jump from the fourth story window at the factory. Uh, um, what's uh, what's my mood before we? Get, what's your Fair. what's the uh, the ISIS policy on, on national? Well, I think this is where I I feel like more of a Democrat because I. I don't want you to have a wall, yeah. first of all. I want to try. And also, I, I agree in part with um, some of the statements made as far as the climate, the Green New Deal people. I do think that uh, your days are numbered. Mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> just, just ours? Yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> it's a localized <laughs> phenomenon, is what you're saying. <laughs> you want to hasten the end of America? <laughs> just just uh, the great Satan and the little By Satan. By the way, you guys cannot America. see uh, how funny uh, my half Asian lawyer is. He's t positively tickled pink this whole time next to Mahmood. <laughs> Mahmood, you bring joy into everyone's life. We We're hanging out. We're like having oh, fun. Good time. I might bring the lawyer. Uh, by the way, it, here's the thing it doesn't matter where you stand, and Republicans have this debate. Conservatives have had yeah. this debate about yeah. the national emergency, and I think it's a healthy debate to have. That's yeah. a good example where we can find common ground or have a healthy debate. Regardless of where you line up, this is definitely a win from President Trump's perspective. But you, you don't have to take my word for it. We have two national emergencies, one declared on the southern border where the president transfers and ta is taking away millions of dollars from other agencies to address a wall, which doesn't even solve these issues. Why? Yeah, it helps. Why? It Why helps. are we going to waste billions of dollars on a medieval fortress that won't work? <laughs> I urge my colleagues to vote uh, and override the veto. Leading President Is Trump to issue the first enough veto for the of this turtles club? <laughs> I'm more convinced than ever that the president's actions are not only unlawful, they are deeply Is irresponsible. Is Mr. Peabody? A wall is an immorality. Oh, really? It's not who we are as a nation. For some, who, was that really? Mr. Peabody before yeah. Nancy Pelosi? <laughs> I don't think we should have a wall. No, no, no. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> no, I'm not sure about it. His campaign must was have been that, a Was that yeah. Mr. Peabody or was that uh, Boo Boo? I think it was it's the same guy. The same guy. Oh, Yogi, my <laughs> little fishers are sure. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs>
<laughs> Here's the thing. Even, even as recent, people were saying that Trump's chances, they were gone for 2020, yeah, right? This done. is what people were saying three weeks ago. This is why you have to look at the long ball of politics. If yeah. you look at this week, you'd have to make a very different prediction than you would have made three weeks ago. And that's why the media, where are they right now? Not, go check Huffington Post. Go check Vox. Go check Washington Post right now. See if they're talking about the wall being built, completely being exonerated from the Mueller report. And um, I don't think it's just Avenatti. They're quietly slipping away. Green New Deal. And you know what? I just, I think it's time. I'm exhausted. I will tell you frankly, I'm exhausted. I am tired from all this winning, and I'm gonna need to take a nap. And then after this, we'll have uh, we'll have Crenshaw Yay. after a uh, little bit of REM sleep from so much winning. Dreams of sugar. Bl Usually I'm talking to the French, I'm insulting him or his mother. You know, there's a lot of rape that goes up in rural Wisconsin at truck stops. Or who they're deep, deep platforming. F Ready? We're rolling? It's tapet. Tapet. Tapet means f in French. <clears throat> Usually I'm talking to him French, I'm insulting him or his mother. You know, there's a lot of rape that goes up in rural Wisconsin at truck stops. And Brian Stelter keeps fun hauling each other. Did you understand the. The implication? No! No! They don't want it, but they keep on holing and blowing, and so you end up... CNN. Will you join up at louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club, or are you a butt muncher? The suspense is killing me! Hello, YouTube! Betty Crowder here with an update. As many of you know, this week I was quite sick. I had to get a surgery on my tooth infection, and after the anesthesia, I started shaking and convulsing like Michael J. Fox on a tilt the world. I was at the hospital for four days, during which time I lost six pounds and chewed out my IV and catheter. But they cleared me to go home, and now I'm giving it a little of this and a little of that, and I'm back fighting pots. And now I can say at four months old, I am officially the most expensive puppy in the world. And they still don't know exactly what's wrong with me. So as shameless as it sounds, if you want my continued medical care, and you don't want Betty Crowder to die, join at louderwithcrowder.com slash mug club. Why I oughta. You're an Eminem. There's no point in wondering where your pockets are. Tasting smooth, creamy milk. I just realized I went the wrong way on that, where I'm supposed to do this and lean into it here, like the oh. Hogan, but I leaned in this way, I got you. which I think means, you know, that I'm functionally retarded. I think it means that there's Possible. a serious problem and I'm it's in trouble. Possible. And I'm in trouble because our next guest really classes up the show. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. Elegant guest. And a, a lot of our fans have been asking for him to be on. Let me just give him his intro because a lot of people mm. complain if we don't give them the intro, but everyone already knows who he is. Uh, they've, been, they've been all a Twitter. See what I did there? Oh. Uh, all right. He is a representative from Texas' second congressional district. I wouldn't have gotten the number right otherwise. Oh, yeah. I just know he's a representative. But more importantly, more interestingly, a uh, former Navy SEAL officer who uh, earned two Bronze Star medals, Purple Heart, uh, went to Harvard after military service. And a lot of people know, you know, he lost his right eye serving yeah. in Afghanistan. Uh, Certified Due badass. to an IED. You can follow him on the Twitter at Rep Dan Crenshaw. Representative Crenshaw, thank you for being here. So, sorry, Tycoon Crenshaw, you told me before the break. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Stephen. This is uh, awesome to be with you. I am very glad to have you here. And just to get it, just the discomfort right out of the way, and I'm going to be hypocritical, how annoying is it that everyone always asks you about your eye patch first, knowing that I just did that? <laughs> oh, well, no one's as annoying as you i guess oh jeez! <laughs> <laughs> i really and pete davidson it. threw you a few jabs and i'm i top the list i feel horrible about myself no oh, you're, you're great i'm a big fan i'm a big fan um no i i don't mind it's it's it's, it's part of my story and and frankly being in politics is telling your story right um, because right. you do have to connect with people uh in order to 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 get them to believe that you should represent them. Uh, there has to be some kind of human connection and, and, and sharing part of yourself with them is, is a big part of that. So I, I, I surely expect it. Right. Well, and I appreciate how level-headed you are. I want to get to that in a, uh, as it relates to Trump a little bit. But since we led with that, you know, Pete Davidson obviously got in trouble for mentioning your, your eye patch on Saturday Night Live. And I remember a lot of conservatives were outraged saying he needed to be fired. 
then you appeared with him and and buried the hatchet pretty pretty quickly. That's not typical. And we we're held to that same standard as a comedy show. Where often I say, listen, I don't want to think you want to take everything that we say 100% seriously. W what inspired that? Because that is counterculture to the outrage um, society in DC, both on the right and left. Yeah, and it's something we got to fix in this country because it's out of control. Yeah. Um, so. You know, well, uh, of course, you know, going back in time a little bit, just so everybody understands, you know, there was there was certain elements of his joke that were like, nah, they were kind of funny, but, you know, kind of offensive. But like, right. you know, at first he said that I looked like a hitman in a porno. And I was like, ah, OK, I'm curious of what kind of uh, kind of films you're watching. Uh, <laughs> Pete, but I wasn't like, yeah, I, I just, you know, is this a genre? Like there was just, it just brought up <laughs> I think he just went down uh, Avenatti's client list and just searched yeah. those. Mm. <laughs> So that wasn't the part that like got everybody riled up. It, it was the it was the part after that. Maybe he misspoke. Maybe it was scripted funny. I, who knows? Um, but he just said, "I know he lost his eye in war or, or whatever." Right. right. It was dismissive. That's what that's what that's what made everybody angry. So I woke up the next day, and um, you know, to a bunch of texts from friends, and uh, you know, noting that this had happened, and we kind of watched the media outrage sort of play out. Um, there there were a lot of there was a lot of outrage for it, and I was expected to make a comment on it and i couldn't i can't fake outrage right you know, i'm not i'm not good at that we have we have very dark senses of humor in the seal teams um True, <laughs> we yeah. have examples of that so we're, we're pretty used to, to having thick skin and um so i i i have to admit i was not i it did not take some kind of emotional toll on me that the frustration with it was the fact that i had to deal with it at all um but but I, so i just kind of said what i felt which is like listen don't Try hard not to offend people, but also try hard not to be offended. I think that's a good way to live yeah. uh, in this world. And, and you know, just because our society at this moment tends to value and, and I would say elevate the sort of victimhood mentality and elevate this aggrieved victim status. It's like, oh, man, if I could just be an aggrieved victim, then I'll really be right. Then I'll win. That's a, kind of a terrible place for our, our culture to be. Right. And I don't want to be part of that. And so... Um, there was just, there was no reason to demand apologies for, for any of this nonsense. Right. Um, that's a good a point though. That's a really good point. Not a lot of politicians, but we make that point on this show, but yeah, the, the seeking affliction as you see with people out there and people say, well, why would anyone want to be in this? And then insert minority class of the day here. I go, well, I don't know because you could get off uh, faking hate crimes for starters. Um, <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, but rich Hollywood. So it's a, it's across the board at that point. Let me, let me kind of moving on from that. Let me ask you this. How have you become, I mean, obviously as a, f a freshman representative, and we use that term a lot, but so popular, despite being one of, I would say, the few balanced uh, viewpoints out there, if people follow your social media, on President Donald Trump. You know, a lot of people are seen as either never Trump or they're seen as MAGA hat, wear MAGA hat wearing, it doesn't matter what he does. You praise him where he's right, and uh, you, you know you called him out. You criticized him when he was talking about uh, John McCain recently and criticizing him and lobbying some, some attacks after, after he had died. Um, how do you remain so popular? Because there aren't many people who seem to figure out that equation. Well, I mean, we haven't done a poll. I, I don't know that I'm so popular. <laughs> I can tell you with our viewers and our readers. Oh, yeah, yeah, they love you. Oh, yeah. Um, I hope so. You know, because I think people respect intellectual consistency and honesty. Uh, they just want you to tell you why you're saying what you're saying. Mm -hmm. they, don't want, they don't want to feel like it's just part of a political calculation. And so the way to avoid it looking like it's part of a political calculation is it for it not to be a political calculation and for it to actually be true. Right. Okay. And, 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 and ah, listen, I, I don't take swipes at the president just to do it. Okay. A lot of never Trumpers just do that. Right. I think, I think they do it just because it's become part of their brand and they just can't help themselves and, and they forget to defend conservatism. So that's a real problem because a lot of what President Trump does is conservative. A lot of the way he governs is conservative and it's good. Mm -hmm. There's some things I disagree with. It should be really simple to simply say, well, I disagree with those things. I'm not a, you know, I, I'm not a sycophant. I'm not just following blindly. Yeah. So it's well, you know what? That's a, that segues into an interesting point. First off, I love that Beto O'Rourke had to respond to your tweet in an interview with uh, was it uh, was it Chris Hayes? I don't know if the Hayes actually called him out on that, which was interesting. Yeah, I, yeah, Chris Hayes. Uh, I'm still, by the way, if anyone could explain the Brian Stelter thing to me, please let me know. I still don't get it. We just talked about that a couple. I don't understand <laughs> it. I don't get it. Um, I love that he was forced to respond because of your social media. But um, let me ask you this: you, you've also held a position on the uh, the const uh, the the border crisis, right? And a lot of people have talked about the constitutionality of that and the state of emergency. Uh, you were just explaining this to me during the, the brief break. 
what is your stance and how do you justify it as a consistent conservative? Because I mean, it may surprise yeah. a lot of people. Yeah, um, I've got a series of, of things I want to point out to, to my, con- my conservative colleagues who I think rightfully have concerns over it. Okay, so there's, mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a couple arguments, right? One is that it's not an emergency. Okay, well, the counter argument to that is, well, yes, it is an emergency and, and the numbers dictate that it is. Okay, last month there was, you know, 66,000 apprehensions, uh, depending on how you measure that, almost 80,000, just last month. Yeah. Uh, yesterday it was reported that we're going to have the highest amount of daily illegal crossings in 13 years. The other reason it's an emergency and a humanitarian emergency at that is because is because our, our system is designed to encourage um, immigrants to drag children across because they know if they bring a child across, they get let go into the population. We have a whole new generation of dreamers being created right. uh, because of that. Um, and, uh, and, and that constitutes a crisis. All right. There's more family units being apprehended than ever before. So that's the problem. Is it an emergency? Yes. Is it different than it was even a year ago? Yes, absolutely. There is a different situation. Okay, so that's that part. Um, then there's the constitutionality of it. Now, there's, 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 there's two elements of the Constitution that I believe butt up against each other here, and you pretty much have to decide which one you value more. Mm-hmm. On this side, you have the appropriations part. Okay, that's Article 1, right? Congress is in charge of appropriating money. You, you can't just take you can't just change that. Now, technically, the president is reprogramming money. He's not taking it out of the Treasury like the Constitution says you can't do. But that's just a OK. That's a technicality. Mm-hmm. There's the other part of it, though, which says that the president needs to faithfully execute the law. That's Article two. Well, what law are we talking about? Well, how about U.S. Code 1325, which is, is this uh, how which, popular you are? Is this your computer letting you know that everyone's texting you right now? <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's good. I wish I could make that. If I, I, if I mute that, I wonder if I mute you. That's the problem. That's okay. We'll right. deal with it because we love yeah, because you're so it. cuddly. <laughs> Sorry. Um, uh, so, and you were talking about, so yes, you were going to the president base, uh, after you got into the constitutionality, Article 1, and now we're going to, uh, you're going over to the president and uh, what kind of falls under his legitimate purview, I believe, is where you're headed. Exactly. We want you to faithfully execute the law. And, and 1325 is a law. It says you cannot cross the border illegally. And so... Uh, it's not being enforced right now. It's the president's job to enforce it. Uh, so, again, those two butt up against each other. I value that one. I value the one that says we have to protect our country yeah. uh, over over this over this other one, which is an appropriations law that was passed by Congress. So, um, that coupled with the National Emergencies Act itself, which clearly gives it puts it in writing and statute to 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 use to to use that act and in, in, in that way, right. I, I think we've got a pretty good case. Yeah, I would agree with you. And that actually would be one of the few areas where people could look at executive orders and say, as it relates to national security or national emergency, that's what the role of the president is effectively. It should be limited. But if it deals with national security, obviously that, that he's called a co- the commander in chief for a reason. And I think it does come down to, I guess, the gray area of whether you consider the border crisis a national emergency. I think you've made a very strong case. And this brings me to something else here. There are a lot of similarities between you and Go with me here. So don't take offense to it right away because what I'm about to say is way worse than what Pete Davidson said, but I'm going to bring it all back home. Some similarities <laughs> here between uh, Alexandria Casio, uh, Nina Pinta, Santa Maria Cortez, in that you are both new, fresh faces. Social media is a huge portion of your platform, very influential, uh, both seen as, as, as firebrands. But I think there are some differences here which really sort of draw a significant line in the sand as to how cons- the people conservatives embrace versus the left in that namely you're articulate uh pragmatic not a doomsday theorist in the same way that uh that uh nina pinta santa maria cortez is and open you openly list references sources you know when you're talking about the border crisis you listed charts on twitter i had cortez respond to me on twitter and just say well look it up well, well, hold on a second. Why don't you show me? You made the claim. Um, yeah. Have you heard these? Sim- have you heard these comparisons before? And do you do you see that as a good thing? Something that you embrace? I, I think. No, I, I was hoping you would just continue your list of compliments, but you know, can't go on forever. I, yeah, uh, the interview can't go on that long. But you know, when we get off air, I can uh, I can make sure to. I'll make you feel very comfortable. Uh, <laughs> I'm married, by the way. People are going to take that the wrong way. I mean, I'm, I'll make you feel comfortable in coming back because after, after I took it the wrong. Yeah, way. I took it the wrong. I apologize. Hey, Ted Cruz came back. Hey, <laughs> four times. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, I, I always take a slight amount of offense. When people say that, but I do understand what people mean by it. It's it's a matter of media attention. We're both young. We're both millennials. We're both, you know, um, I, I I think trying to drive a future for our party. Um, I'm really happy with the, the, the future that I'm that, that that me and my colleagues talk about for our party. I'm not I'm not so sure they have those that same kind of unity over on that side. Um, yeah. 
you know, and, 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 and listen, you, you brought up something, which is defend what you're saying, you know? Yeah. And, and, and unfortunately we're getting too comfortable in this, in this culture with the, with this idea of kind of bold ignorance, right? Where it's just like, if, if, if you're, if you're, if you, um, if you're emotional about it, if you're genuine, if you're authentic, then the facts don't matter. Right. <laughs> and, right. Uh, I think she's actually said that before uh, in an interview. She yeah. said something along those lines. Uh, well, where- Vox and Huffington Post said that even if Cortez, I be- it was either Vox, Huffington Post, it might have been Washington Post, so I don't know exactly, but we did a, a piece on it yeah. not that long ago where they said, it doesn't matter if she hasn't ironed out all the details because she's morally right. She's fundamentally yeah. morally right. And for me, I go, well, right. how do you know that you're morally right? The facts should line up with how you feel. The facts should line up with how you're emoting. And if they don't at all, well, chances are you're probably morally incorrect. Um, but they grant her, and especially the media, I know this sounds like a tired trope, but you deal with this all the time as, as a conservative. The media really does um, prop this up and assume the moral high ground to someone like, like AOC. Yeah. Well, they operate from a different premise. I mean, if you're, like, for instance, if you're looking at a Green New Deal and you're operating from a premise of the entire world ending in 12 years, well, then, then there's n- no cost is too much. Right. So they, so they, they, they use, they, they, they 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 configure the data and their arguments in a way to to assume that if you disagree with them, then you are morally corrupt. Right. That's, a, you know, that's a real problem. It means it means you're not having you're not having an intellectual conversation. You know, and they accuse that's conservatives a- and Republicans of doing that with uh, global terrorism. Like, oh, you're fear mongering. Well, hold on a second. Uh, I would say that there is reason for legitimate concern, and I would uh, maybe defer to you since you've yeah. obviously served in our military. Um, yeah. uh, my injury only came from uh, crashing a Jeep on the way to an AIDS walk, uh, so not exactly the same thing. <laughs> but um, global terrorism, more of a concern to me than the reality of the world ending in 12 years if we don't uh, uh, pass a five-page bill. Five pages. Five pages. Yeah. I mean, one is true, one is not, and um, you know, and more recently, what they did that with was was simply the border, right? There's no crisis, nothing to see here. I mean, we heard this over and over and over again, this this mantra of a manufactured crisis, and like, again, I can just lay out the numbers. You know, when you have 400,000 people crossing illegally last year, these are just apprehended, by the way. Border Patrol thinks they maybe get one in three. Yeah, uh, that's an enormous number. I, I don't have to call them bad people. I don't have to say that they're. There might be terrorists among them. And this is where our messaging gets screwed up, I think, as conservatives. Sure. Like, I don't have to call them all criminals, okay? I mean, technically, they're conducting a criminal act by crossing the border illegally. But let's just assume that they're all good people, 100%. Yeah. It's still an unsustainable, it's an unsustainable inflow of people, right? Because you, you come in here, uh, we, we have to be putting these kids into our schools. They're using emergency rooms. There, there, there's a cost on society. And it's also impossible to... to um, to integrate them into our society. And here's the second thing that people don't talk, conservatives don't say enough is you are cutting in front of the line in front of legal immigrants who deserve to be in this country because we do want immigrants in this country. And we can have a valid conversation about whether we should up our quota of legal immigrants. Um, but but sh- there, there really shouldn't be any discussion over whether we should have illegal immigrants coming into the country. Well, that sounds about like uh, something a white male millennial would say, but I'll let the <laughs> audience make their own judgment here. Uh, I have to ask you about a couple more things. We do have to get going relatively soon. You just introduced a, uh, a, a bill that would include family leave for millennials. You introduced it, I believe, on uh, on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Pay family leave. Can you can you uh, explain that to people who may not understand it and where they can go to learn more about it? Uh, Senator Rubio and uh, Representative uh, Ann Wagner have been working on this for for quite a while now. Uh, Senator Romney was uh, was there at the press conference as well too, supporting this. So uh, really proud to be a part of this. Basically, it's a, it's an understanding that, and I think this is this is an overarching theme that I want to point out. Sometimes the left is not always wrong about the problems they point out and what they want. They're just almost always wrong about the solutions they propose. Very okay, good point. so Payton believes a pretty good example of that, right? Pay family leave. That's not a terrible thing in and of itself. I would love for, for new young parents to be able to, to have some kind of financial cushion if they're going to have their first baby, especially in their, if they're in their 20s or 30s or even 40, you know, you're yeah. getting your start in life. All right. Millennials understand this. Um, and, 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 you know, it's important to point out the millennial generation, not because this bill is just for millennials, but because we could probably as millennials, we could probably make the most use of it. Right. So the question is, how do you pay for something like this? Um, because the Democrat solution is, well, giant government program, billions and billions and billions and billions of dollars, uh, completely unsustainable. The pe- very people we're trying to help, we're going to indebt them to do it. Well, that's a terrible solution, not very creative, um, and pretty much pertains to most of the solutions they propose for just about every problem that they think is a problem. Okay, but let's assume this is a problem. 
because I think it is. And we're pro-family, right? I want the family unit to thrive. So what this allows is it allows you to borrow from your future social security funds. Basically, and I'll give you the simplest explanation of it. Basically, you take three months of family leave. Okay, now you have to back up your, 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 your retirement by a similar amount of time to pay it back. Mm, now, you have other wow. options to pay it back, too. Uh, you can pay it back sooner if you'd like. Uh, you can pay, pay it back in, in lengthier payments if you'd like. But it doesn't change the, the long-term budget. It doesn't tam- change the long-term health of Social Security either. Um, it does change how we formulate the, 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 the short-term health, but not the long-term. Uh, and that's important. So we're, we're basically, the way I put it, you're borrowing from someone richer than yourself, which is you in the future, <laughs> because you've actually had time to make it in this world. So it's like time cop with entitlements. <laughs> It's a really good way to put it. I'm yeah. going to use that. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Perfect. I, and also, I, I, maybe a little bit of Demolition Man with entitlements. I'm not entirely yeah. sure. The whole <laughs> Van Damme catalog, <laughs> really. That was an interesting movie at the time. Sylvester <laughs> Stallone. <laughs> I know. Wait, just, was Demolition Man Stallone? Yes, it was. Who, wait, oh, what? Yeah. Oh, okay. Snipes. Was, Stallone. was Snipes yeah. in Time Cop? Yeah. No, yeah. Snipes was in no, no, they were both. Right? I have no idea. I know Time Cop was Van Damme, but for some reason I'm thinking he was also in Demolition Man. I know Snipes. I think Snipes was in both. The point is, I don't want. I don't want to muddy the waters on your brilliant proposal here with my stupid commentary. Uh, we do have to get going here. So, final thing. Um, one thing I love. I have a tweet right here uh, from you to uh, Representative Adam Schiff, where you said that he said he had direct evidence of Trump Russia collusion, and this is important because it's putting a fine point on it. He didn't say maybe there's a possibility. He said that he had direct evidence of Trump Russia collusion. That means it's a lie. Um, and he's doubling down still, right, with, with those comments that he's made. Yeah. So sorry. Yeah. This is important for people to uh, maintain a timeline, and this is why, like you said, intellectual consistency is important because we need to hold people to the same standard that they would hold out. And if you say, "Listen, we need to investigate someone for collusion, uh, for collusion, for Russia, c- Russian collusion, t- collusion could be a country, hey, could be a know. city in a country. I have no idea." Um, then we need to say, "Okay, by that same standard, if you've claimed that you have evidence." We might need to investigate you. So this is a, a springboard to say, what would you say is uh, President Trump's biggest win of the week? Would it be the Mueller report? Would it be Avenatti? Uh, if you had to list them and rank them. Man, it's, it's been a pretty good week for the president. He's, 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 I think he's, taken a, he's just kicking his feet up right now um, and, and well-deserved because it, really it really did all come down to like one moment where, where uh, the Mueller report um, – you know, found that there was no collusion. Avenatti <laughs> got arrested, which is still a little disappointing for some of us who would have liked to see him jump into the presidential primary and, and along with every other Democrat. But he's yep. not going to be part of that. Um, <laughs> and uh, too bad. You know, it, it just to just to, to to watch all that take place. Happy for the president. I I, I think it's a good win. Um, his veto was uh, uh, not overridden either. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we should be seeing some money um, come into the. Uh, Come in, uh, come into wall funding, uh, which, which which I think we need, and I think we're going to send it to the right places. Um, I think just uh, West West of El Paso is, is is the last I heard on that, and I don't think that'll hurt our military readiness either, based on where I'm seeing that money kind of come from or disaster preparedness. So these are all these are all good things. The president's making good on his promises to actually secure our country. Um, we have all found out that he indeed did not collude with Russia. I'd never really thought he did, but it looks like we have now have a lengthy investigation that shows that he did not. And Democrats really need to accept that. The one thing I, I, the one thing I want to say about Adam Schiff is he used his position on the Intelligence Committee to make everybody believe that he had access to information that he really didn't. Yes. And that's, mm-hmm. that, that is extre- that's beyond dishonest. It's one thing to just kind of say it, the politicians always do, but he really, he really, uh, he, he abused his position, and, and that's really problematic. Yeah, and you know, sometimes uh, President Trump can come across a little nutty, but I think that anyone would lose their marbles a little bit when people are out there claiming that you've done something that you haven't done. I think anyone would go a little bit nuts in the public eye, where they're going, hold on a second, you're trying to obstruct justice. What? Obstruct what? There's no crime. And they're like, afterwards, like, well, there's no crime, but maybe obstruction? We don't know. And he's going, shift, shift, shift. That's how I feel. But I will say this, we have to get going, and I am tired, and you must be exhausted from all the witting. It's so much, I think. <laughs> People are getting tired. Uh, people can follow you at Rep Dan Crenshaw. Is uh, there anywhere else that you would uh, like to plug, real quick? Yeah, well, uh, at Rep Dan Crenshaw, I got another Twitter account at Dan Crenshaw TX. We use them both. They're both great follows. Please follow both Instagram Dan Crenshaw TX and, and uh, just search for Dan Crenshaw on Congress and uh, on Facebook. Right, uh, Crenshaw, thank you so much for being here, sir. I appreciate it. We must go. We're going to wrap this up in a nice ribbon. We'll be back after this.
Crowder Ranger panties. Buy yours today at louderwithcrowdershop.com. One live read of the week time. This is where I tell you about our sponsor, Walther and Mug Club. Steve, um, Steven? Yeah. Do, do you, want, you know, I, I like you. I like you. I, I, I see you do these reads. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're doing it all wrong. Okay. okay. Do you, I, 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 I'll help you. I'm not entirely comfortable with that. I, I, I can do it. I can do it. All Please. Right. I have media training. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Mahmoud Al Mahmoud here to tell you all about the Mug Club. It's a wonderful mug, right? And if we don't receive your $99 in the next 48 hours, we will inflict unspeakable harms on it. Okay, I, I, don't, I don't think that. No, that doesn't, that's not right. No, no, no. It's a proven method. I'm not. Oh, oh, oh I, I made a mistake. Sorry. Okay. Uh, 69 for students in active military. But yeah. if we don't receive it, we will inflict unspeakable. No, the, the thing is we want the mug to get to them intact. Listen, you, not only do you get the hand-etched mug, you get access to the entire Blaze catalog, lotterwithcredit.com slash mug club. Uh, you do get the hand-etched girthy mug. You get the daily. There's a lot of content. We don't want to hurt the mug. Oh, yes. We'll etch their hands too. Yes, no. I like it. Perfect. Right. $99. Yeah. By the way, can, uh, can you hook me up with like a Walther? Uh, I, I, I would, but I'm not sure how comfortable they are funding foreign caliphates. I'm going to get a Smith & Wesson. Yeah. Well, they, they made a Smith & Wesson shop right. You can't please everyone. Steven. All right. That was uh, the blobfish. <sighs> Have you ever seen a blobfish? They're disgusting. Oh yeah, the, the blobfish. There's, there's no reason for. I just you know I didn't you know I didn't really feel like doing the drowning dance. I didn't have that much energy because Dan Crenshaw really took it out of me. Oh. Representative Dan Crenshaw. He just looks too badass hey, all the time. I need to issue an apology really quickly before I get to the uh, the closing uh, segment here. Johnny Depp, I'm sorry. I'm oh. sorry, Johnny. I have given Johnny Depp a rough time because I do think he's kind of douchey. A but bit, yeah. When he was accused of of beating uh, Amber is Amber Heard Amber, Amber Heard up a little bit, I think we had a bit about that at that point. It wasn't really we weren't really condemning him, but his drunken tirade where he threw the turns out she kicked his ass. Yes. So I hope that guy just uh, you, I hope you take it for everything she's worth. So really, you're probably taking yourself for everything you're worth because yeah. probably a joint checking account account in that household. Let's be honest. Um, <laughs> So this week, and uh, you can bring it up there, uh, Garrett, uh, for those who didn't follow earlier, I was subject to my first auto accident as a, as a passenger, I should say. Uh, when I was a kid, I was hit by a car once. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I know a, that story. Yeah, yeah. The, look, the whole dashboard just exploded, the airbags. Ooh. Those were not uh, friendly highway. airbags, by the way. Yeah, it was, it was a t- tire blue on an older Jeep. We we're exiting on a loop from one freeway to another. It's hard for me to explain, but basically, here's a freeway. You need to get on this freeway, okay? And there's a loop. And the loop comes around to get on this freeway, and then there are only two lanes where you're one. And basically, these two lanes, one lane is trying to get over on this other freeway, the freeway that goes east west, and the other one, people are trying to get over on another loop that goes downward, going north south. And I have I've had to 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 do this exit many times. I've always thought it was incredibly dangerous. So when the tire blew while we were Take, I, I, I obviously, I, I panicked. Uh, now looking at it now, it doesn't look so bad, thank God. And it really was not as bad as it could have been. Um, we're fortunate that actually, ironically, the complete spin out of, of the car, I, which could potentially increase the force of the, we went into the concrete girder, oh, yeah. I think yeah. caused it to scrape a little bit, which cradled. It saved you a little bit. The, the, the crash. Um, the, I mean, the frame is totaled. I heard totaled. concrete. I was like, oh. Oh, man, yeah, the frame the is wall? completely, oh, well, it's a, a Jeep with a metal right. bumper. And the uh, bumper's sh- completely broken. The absorbed. steel frame completely cracked, bent. Uh, so uh, and it breaks my heart because Johnny Boy, who was driving, yes. loves that Jeep. But it could have been a lot worse. Thank God he's fine. He'll get another Jeep. So I say this to explain to you what happened and to let you know that I understand that this isn't exactly a scrape with death as many car accidents could be. But at the time, I didn't know that. So at that moment in time, feeling the tire blow out in one of the most difficult loops in Texas, all I knew was just, Spin, screech, and with each spin, 
I can just see two lanes behind us, the two lanes, which one of which is going very, very fast, and yeah. the other people are coming in on a blind loop, and then spin, 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 spin at concrete girder, spin, 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 spin cars going by, uh, and it felt like they were getting faster, uh, and, and the concrete girder was getting faster as it came into view. I, I thought it might be, I really thought it might be curtains. In retrospect, no. But it's kind of like that kayak story that I've told you about before. I think I've t where I was sure that death yeah. was just like my parents were going to be on shore and just I couldn't turn a kayak over. It was one of those old, you know, like the seal skin kayaks. I've had that before. Not these open kayaks. kayaks are like today. <laughs> yes. Especially when you have no idea. It was just at a cottage. I'm, like, oh, I'm going to go out. This doesn't sound like a, a, a smart design. Let's, let's stick you inside of a kayak and you can't get out. Well, they needed smart. to be watertight back in the day. Yeah. Oh. That's what they did. Yeah. Um, but I, I, the thing is, I, I bring it up because obviously I didn't die in a kayak. Obviously we didn't die in this car crash. But at that moment, I thought this might be it. This is how it ends. Um, and I, 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 I got that kind of flash that people talk. I wouldn't say that my life flashed before my eyes, but let me explain it. In this short moment, like count a million different thoughts were going through my head. After it happened and I kind of got to download, I, I was going, oh my God, how did I think of all these things at that second? So first off, was obviously, my God, just please straighten out. And then I thought this exit is the worst. And I remember thinking this as I, I was like, damn it, this exit is the worst city engineering in history. And then I thought I'm never traveling in an old Jeep with crappy felt seats again. And then I thought, oh, okay, we're definitely spinning out. And then I thought, God, just please let us crash somewhere, not into these two lanes. And I thought, oh my God, we're gonna crash. And now I just really hope that another car doesn't come and hit us. And then it hit me, okay, I could, I could die right here. I remember that thought going through my head, this could happen, just <laughs> And the odd thing is, I was oddly ac accepting of it. And, and sometimes in those moments, it's, it's kind of a silly uh, but perfect example of ego. You, you try to almost strike a bargain with God. And I remember thinking, you know what? In this, mo this, really, in this moment, I remember thinking, death would be okay. I just don't want to get hurt. So let me die. That's fine. But just don't let me be crippled or maimed or pried out with the jaws of life on a nightly news in a quadrant view. And then there was a moment when the, the airbags went off. Again, these are mid-90s airbags. Not, they were certainly not soft. It wasn't like being cradled in your love's bosoms at all. These were decidedly <laughs> unfriendly, aggressive airbags. Uh, they went off, causing my head to what I can only imagine was like getting paddled back and forth between the unsupportive bucket seats like a pinball. Just <laughs> and I couldn't hear anything. Uh, everything went completely white. Uh, things slowly kind of came back into view and sounds warped back in. Smoke was coming out of the dash. I think it was the airbag gas. I don't know. I've, I've never had airbags deploy before. Uh, certainly not in a, a, I don't know. It's a 90s model Jeep, I think. Uh, it was total sensory deprivation. And I couldn't really move when I came to. And there was a moment there where I thought, oh, oh crap. Uh, I'm still here, but I can't move. Cars are coming. They're going to hit us. And then I thought, oh, crap. I'm still here. I don't know how bad this is going to be. Um, and... I can't move. And we're being upset about it. And thinking about it now, it's pretty disgusting. I'm pretty disgusted that I thought that. And sometimes there are aspects of yourself that you can't really fully understand until you're put in that kind of a scenario. But isn't that the way it, it often goes in life? Many times we'll do anything just to avoid the pain. Sometimes we'd rather take the loss, the finality of defeat. Or in this case, I'll take death instead of being in a wheelchair. It sounds silly, but I remember thinking that. We'll take that finality rather than the pain of the struggle. And I think I know why, at least in my case, uh, in trying to deconstruct some of this, because I had a, afterward, there was a lot of <laughs> cornucopia of adrenaline-induced visceral emotive reactions. And many of you watching the show know that I'm not a big fan of cliches, not the Oprah-friendly sound bites, but usually because they're often untrue. And in this case, one that comes to mind we hear a lot is people aren't afraid of being powerless. They're, they're, they're more afraid of being more powerful than they can possibly imagine. So, something along those lines. Neither one of those things is true. No one wants to be powerless. And I can attest to, in that moment in time, uh, I, sort of I was trying to control aspects of the uncontrollable. But I think the reason that uh, many of us will find the out, look for it, take the defeat over the pain of the struggle is because we all find comfort in the idea that our limitations, our burdens, or even our ultimate defeats are completely out of our control, right? If I, if I, I remember, the, if I die, I die, that, it's just my time. That's out of my hands. But if I don't, the ball's back in my court. If I don't die, this might hurt a lot. I might have to go through a really tough climb just to get back to capable. And it's an even harder pill to swallow that sometimes we feel the setback is out of our control, but the recovery is on us. And that's a lot to take. That's hard. And that's life. And you know what? That never changes. 
Let me give you another example from, from this crash that'll hopefully explain it. Um, again, to explain a lot of the crap to unpack that I'm not proud of as it relates to ego. R right after the accident, uh, my friend Johnny Boy who was driving was shaking. I came, my vitals were fine. Uh, his blood pressure was, was through the roof. I could tell he was out of it in, in, in the past. I hope he doesn't mind me sharing this. I, I asked him before. Uh, he ha I know that he has had absent seizures when he was young. So I was very worried about him because he was, he was shaking. Uh, so our, our wives, Tim and Manny, uh, who work with us, uh, they're fantastic. They, they came and got us off the free. We went to a nearby McDonald's. Right away, I said, Johnny has to go home, send him home. And I remember telling my wife and the team that I was pretty much fine. And I just needed a moment to, to gather my bearings. Uh, it was a lie. I lied. I did not feel fine. And I said to them that I thought I could still go down to the AIDS walk and do the whole day of filming. Uh, I said, I just needed a minute. It reminds me of that scene. And if you ever saw the film reg regarding Henry, did you ever see regarding Henry? Yeah. It's where Harrison Ford gets shot. And I think it's the most accurate depiction of uh, the kind of shock in that scenario ever put on screen, maybe along with Captain Phillips. That was really good too. But Harrison Ford is at a convenience store getting a pack of smokes and a guy holding up the store, he just demands his wallet and he shoots him. And Harrison Ford, doesn't, he doesn't spin over like a, in a spaghetti western, uh, or he doesn't scream in pain. He just holds up his hand and he, you know, Harrison Ford is, no, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. And he's just holding, hold, hold on, hold, hold on a minute. And he falls over in shock. And he's bleeding. He was shot. And it's almost more impactful when you watch this because you think that's probably how someone might react. That's how I felt at the McDonald's at that point. I, I was saying, I'm fine. I just need to take a second. But the adrenaline dump stopped. And I'm, I'm pretty sure the airbag boxed my right ear because I couldn't hear. Uh, all, all day it was, it was ringing, just increase that a high pitch ringing, like in saving private Ryan. I couldn't hear out of my right ear for the rest of the day. And that was my equivalent to say, well, hold, hold, hold on a minute. I was, I was sore. I was tired. I couldn't hear. I didn't feel fine. You know why I lied? Because of ego. I was thinking of the people depending on me, the people that, that we employ here, the idea that this uh, story would circulate and that they would maybe say, oh man, you know, Stephen was such, such a trooper. He went on down, he finished the segment anyway. And so I lied and I said it was fine. But I remember when I was saying it, I was looking to my wife. And I think we've all done this at some point. I was looking to my wife with the eye saying, I'm not fine. I'm not fine. Step in here, call it, don't let me go. Because I wanted to prove that I could do it. But if my wife said, no, you're going home. Well, guys, that's, that's, out, of my, that's out of my hands. And see, the point here is, I realized that I wanted my limitations to be set by someone else. I wanted my defeat or what I perceived as my defeat to be out of my control because otherwise people would see me as a quitter. The truth is in not being honest and lying to myself and my team about what I could or couldn't control, that was, in a way, that was more of quitting. What would have been less of a quitter's mentality would have been to say, guys, I can't hear you. My neck hurts. I'm tired. I'm going home. We'll live to fight another day because that would have been taking ownership the situation myself. But instead, I just wanted to say, no, 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 I can do it. I can do this. And I was looking for anyone else, anyone else to take the out for me. And that's the mentality of wanting to absolve myself of the responsibility of accepting and recognizing my own limitations. And I was, I was doing it all over again. The, the, just like the crash, the, the bargain with God, if you want to call it. Hey, if I, if I die, that's fine. That's on you. Just please don't let me live and be a vegetable because that's on me and that's going to suck and it'll be embarrassing. In this scenario, I was saying, hey, if my wife calls it, if, if one of you calls it, that's on you. There's nothing I can do. If you don't, it's on me, and I'm going to have to grit my teeth and bear it. And, and, and it being on me is hard because that means now I've got a decision to make, a decision to recognize my limitations and chart a realistic course of action to recognize what I could not do. Now, here's the, here's the thing. Manny and Tim, um, they decided to call it. They said, no, you're going home because they're good people. And I'll tell you, I felt relief. But that doesn't change that I was lying to myself. They didn't decide for me. I let them decide for me because through ego, I basically abandoned my post. So my challenge to you is this. Think of how often you do this, particularly the young men out there. How often do you look for a reason to lie to yourself, to present this facade of things being out of your control, just to avoid admitting your weaknesses? Have you done it? I, well, I, you know, I guarantee you have. I guarantee you'll do it this week. Could be as severe as what I went through or much more severe than what, I, or it could be as simple as, oh, you know, I was, I was late, uh, traffic on the freeway, it's, it's out of my hands, there's nothing I can do. Is it? Do you often find yourself running late? Are you really Superman? Do you make promises you can't keep? Why? And what I want you to do is rather than wait until a crisis occurs so you can throw up your hands and chalk it up to being out of your control, I want you to take inventory right now. What are your limitations? What are your weaknesses? Your quiet time, take a minute, take inventory, because guess what? It's okay. 
It's okay to have limitations. It's okay to have weaknesses. It's okay to be honest about them. This is where we get it wrong. It's not okay to celebrate them. We don't need to celebrate our weaknesses, but it's good to work on them. And there are many things in life that we can't control, but I think we all want to bear a little less responsibility than we probably should sometimes. Here's something you can't control. You can control right now recognizing your weaknesses, recognizing your limitations, and accepting the incremental improvements that you can make to correct them. But you can, you, you can never know what that is. This is something, too. We've talked about this a lot with, with knowing what the hard door is, knowing what the easy out is, and, and recognizing. You can never know. You will never know what your potential is, what you're capable of truly accomplishing if you're lying to yourself because of ego. The guy who claims he can do it all and can't, okay, is of far less value than the man who can look you in the eye and say, you know what, I, I know that I can do this because I know that I can't do that. So I can tell you about any, sh any shadow of a doubt because I know I can't do that, I know I can do this. That's what the world needs more of. That's a real man. And we get it wrong a lot. Take that experiment with you this week, see how it turns out. Don't crash. It